In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Good people of God, you are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Sunday, the 13th of August, 2023. It is the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Church Year A. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the first book of the Kings, chapter 19, verse 9 and verses 11 to 13. In those days, when Elijah came to Horeb, the mount of God, he lodged in a cave, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains, and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind and earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 85. The response to the psalm is, Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. The second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. Brethren, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the sonship, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and of their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. After the crowd was satisfied, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was many furlongs distant from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately he spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Have no fear. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, bid me come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. 
Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Feel the presence of God in moments of pain and difficulty. Feel the presence of God in moments of pain and difficulty. Dear friends in Christ, on this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time Church Year A, our Holy Mother, the Church, assures us that God is ever present in our moments of difficulty. And He has what it takes to give us relief during such moments. All we need do is be assured of His presence. Feel that presence, recognize Him, and turn to Him. People suffer. People really do suffer. People are suffering. Lots of people in pain and going through difficult moments. Do not mind the smiles on our faces. People go through quite a lot of pain. And they are trying to hang on and to endure, though some also are almost giving up, almost sinking into depression, despair, and frustration. Their problems are drowning them. Some have decided not to open up or share their troubles with others, but it does not mean because they don't share or because you don't know, therefore, they are fine. No. Some have nowhere to live. Some have where to live, but rents are due and they owe and are not sure of how to meet their debt. Some have children, but do not have money to fend for their fees. Others do not even have children. Some are battling with one sickness or the other. If not they, their relatives. Some have no work. Some have work, but with little or nothing as salary. Some have no food. Some have marital problems. For others, it is that difficult child, husband, wife, neighbor, or colleague. People are going through quite a lot. Difficulties of varied kinds. What makes the suffering even more painful is the fact that in all this, God seems to be absent or too deaf and silent. Where is God when people suffer? He seems not to act or he seems not to come to our aid. Of what use is he to us? Why do we say, oh God, come to our aid when he seems not to come or to delay until we drown in our problems? Well, beloved, it is for these reasons that the readings of today assure us that we are not alone when we suffer. Let me repeat. We are not alone when we suffer. God is always present. He comes to journey with us in our moments of suffering. Now the question is, do we see his face? Do we feel his presence during those moments? And how can we feel that presence of God? In the gospel narrative we just listened to, the apostles found themselves in their own troubled moments, in their own suffering, symbolized by the waves and the night. They were in a boat, battling with the waves at sinking point. It was at night, in the middle of the night. They were in the high seas, in the middle of nowhere. For those who have traveled by sea, you can imagine you are both battling with the waves. You are between life and death. Or for those who are used to traveling by air, imagine your plane in the midst of heavy turbulence and the pilot calls, please be seated, fasten your seatbelts and the seatbelt sign indicates and you see yourself in the middle of nowhere, in the air, battling between life and death. Or for those who travel by road, imagine that your car has lost its brakes and the driver is battling. The car moving from left to right and you are already seeing yourself dead, do alive. 
This is exactly what the apostles were going through. Then, to make an already bad case worse, they saw someone walking towards them in the middle of that night and they shouted, it is a ghost. Battling between life and death and then a ghost appears. But it was not a ghost, it was Jesus and he told them, do not be afraid. It is I. Do not be afraid. What did Jesus mean when he said, it is I? What he meant is, it is the same me. If for a second you can recall the many great things I have done for you, go back. Just for a second. I know you are in difficult moments. But during those difficult moments, can you for a second go back and see the mighty things I did for you? Remember how I brought you out of Egypt single-handedly. It is I. Remember how I provided manna in the desert. It is I. Remember how I made water gush out from a rock. It is I. Remember how I fought battles for you. Remember how I fed crowds. It is I. It is I. Trust me. Trust what I can do. It is I. In Pidgin, the expression says, Nami. If Unabi don't forget, all two we I don't do, Una member, Nami. It is the same I. Words of assurance. Words of hope. Jesus comes to meet you. He is present in your suffering. It is He. He cannot let you sink into despair and frustration. He cannot let your problems drown you. It is He. He comes to journey with you. In the second reading of today, St. Paul recounts his own sorrow and anguish in his heart, imagining that the Israelites were not able to welcome the gospel message. St. Paul has anguish and sorrow in his heart. But then he is assured because God is always there. In the first reading, the prophet Elijah recognized God's presence in a gentle, still voice. This shows us that there is the need for silence in times of trouble. When we are in trouble, beloved, we need silence. During that moment of silence, it is time for us to recall, to think, and to remember the many great things that God had done in the past. It is He. Silence to pray. Silence to think. We worry and run around in moments of difficulty and we get confused with many opinions. Every person has an opinion to give you when you are in your difficult moment. And then what happens? We get confused. But during those difficult moments, like the prophet Elijah, we can recognize God. If only we can be quiet. We can be still, be calm, and we will feel God's presence and His assuring words. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Your problems will not sink you. Your difficult moments will not drown you. It is I. Courage, I have come to journey with you. As you receive Him today in Holy Communion, when the priest or the nun or the extraordinary minister of communion says to you, the body of Christ... And as you answer, Amen, and receive him, Jesus tells you, It is I whom you are receiving. Go therefore, do not be afraid, and know that Jesus is with you, and you will overcome every difficulty. He will get into that boat, and he will calm the troubled waters, and your difficulties will be overcome. Amen. Let us pray therefore, O dear Lord, we are in our own boats of life. We are facing our own waves, heavy wind. And we are almost giving up. We are almost dying. We are almost getting into frustration and despair. Let us hear those words of assurance. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Oh dear Lord, come to our aid before our boats sink. Come to our aid before your people give in to despair and frustration. Come to their aid, oh dear Lord. Rescue your boats of life and give them again your assurance. Amen. Courage, beloved. Do not give up. Your God is alive and He is present with you as you journey. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>